Hey everybody, this is Modern Refugee. Um, you always hear uh, prepping channels talk about you know putting up food and uh, prepper pantry halls and uh, stockpiling stuff and you know putting up stuff from their own garden, canning and whatnot. But you don't hear quite as much as what people make with all these ingredients that they're uh, putting up. And uh, there's something to be said for ready-made stuff that you can just you know heat up and then you can eat, but most cooking revolves around uh, some type of recipe. So what I thought I would do here today is I got a bunch of stuff here from uh, my prepper pantry, stuff that we use all the time. And I'm going to explain a little bit of some of the simple meals that I make with this stuff. Um, and then maybe that'll give you guys some ideas to uh, make some stuff for yourself and uh, maybe beat this inflation that uh, everybody is getting uh, hammered by right now. Anyway, I'm going to turn the camera around and uh, show you guys a few uh, ideas. This here is uh, some of the ingredients that uh, that I work with here on a weekly basis to basically make stuff for us. Now we like the uh, Tex-Mex stuff, so uh, we typically will have something Tex-Mex at least a couple times a week, and it's a combination of stuff that we bought and uh, stuff that we can put up, grew ourselves, and then some long-term uh, storage items. And uh, the first thing here is is cheese. Now, uh, cheese you can wax and you can put up for uh, long-term storage, uh, but one of the things that we do is we'll buy these large bags of uh, shredded cheese. We'll actually freeze these, and uh, our freezer and our um, refrigerator are sort of our main things that we have the generator for that and then running the uh, gas furnace in the wintertime. So we have our generator to run uh, those things so we can uh, continue to have some type of uh, refrigeration. But we had really good luck with freezing um, this shredded cheese and then this shredded cheese plays a role in a lot of different recipes um, that we uh, make. And uh, then the next thing is... Uh, sort of the long-term storage bin here. We got um, rice. We keep rice in food grade buckets with a uh, cup measure in it so we can measure out whatever that we need and we use these uh, gamma lids to uh, store it so it's easy access to get into that stuff when we're um, cooking. And because we like the Tex-Mex stuff, tortillas are a huge part of that and I don't know if most people know this but you can get shelf stable tortillas they're usually in the Hispanic aisle and uh, it's something that we use quite a bit we'll do street tacos with our canned chicken and canned chicken is one of our uh, all-stars that we use all the time for a bunch of different recipes but we can do street tacos with this we can do enchiladas with this we can do like uh, Mexican lasagna we can uh, cut these up and deep fry these for chips so we can make nachos, tostadas, whatever. Um, a lot of the Hispanic recipes go really good with a long-term um, food storage items. And then the other thing is uh, the flour tortillas. And uh, flour tortillas, one of the things that we like to do with those is make uh, chicken quesadillas again with our uh, canned chicken. And uh, I will mix the uh, the canned chicken, I'll drain it, I'll uh, take the canned uh, chicken, mix it with taco seasoning, mix it with the shredded cheese from the freezer that we got there, and I'll use that as a filling for um, our quesadillas with the flour tortillas, and uh, I'll just put those on the griddle or the cast iron, and that's basically how we make those. It's just a quick and simple thing, and uh, another thing that I'll mention is is Flour tortillas and corn tortillas are two things that every prepper should learn how to make. They're just simple ingredients. They're very simple to make. They're simple to cook. They don't require a lot of uh, energy to make. And you can use, you know, you can use flour. You can use masa like I got there. You can, uh, or you can even make masa. I've done videos on how to make masa from field corn. And, uh, you know, grinding wheat is another thing that most uh, preppers have some ability to do so you can uh, make the flour to make the tortillas but they're really simple they're really easy and they're very easy to make and uh, there's so many different uh, applications from them from breakfast burritos to quesadillas like I said and like I said canned chicken is sort of one of our uh, all-stars we use it for uh different soups you can make chicken noodle soup with this you can you do chicken and rice with this you can do um 
the chicken quesadillas, like I said, white chicken chili. You can do chicken salads. It's just, it's one of the most versatile proteins that you can basically have. And then the liquid that's in there when you can it yourself is basically chicken broth. So then if you're making anything where you have to cook rice or pasta, you can collect that and use that liquid to uh, cook your uh, your other items as well. So you kind of keep all that um, nutrition in place. And taco seasoning. Taco seasoning is one of the main seasonings that I just keep a bunch of here because you can use it for a bunch of different things. You can use it to make refried beans. You can make use it to make stuff like a black bean soup. You can use it for the chicken quesadillas, chicken tacos, street tacos with can, like canned pork. Another thing with uh, canned pork, you can can pork yourself or you can buy the canned pork, but uh, street tacos with a little bit of uh, um, taco seasoning or um, if you want to make like a barbecued pork, you can do bottled uh, barbecue sauce or you can use like my homemade ketchup recipe and I'll throw a couple of different recipes and videos in the description that are sort of pertinent to this uh, to this video here and different things that we can add in but my homemade ketchup is basically a cross between ketchup and uh, barbecue sauce so it's a really good pairing with uh, some type of canned pork. Um, Canned beans are another thing. Um, canned beans are really, really versatile, and you can use canned beans. There's black, and uh, these are uh, great northerns that I got here. Pinto beans are another one. Um, they're really good for adding into stuff to fortify and stuff. So you can make your beans and rice. You got a little piece of sausage. You can uh, cook your rice. You can add those canned beans into it. You can add Cajun seasoning. Cajun seasoning, something like Tony Satchery's uh, Creole seasoning are another good um, all-purpose seasoning to have. You can make a bunch of different things with it. You can make dirty rice. You can make red beans and rice. You can make jambalaya. Any of that stuff goes really good with uh, that. And these are all one-pot meals, so they wouldn't require a lot of electricity or a lot of uh, fuel when you're uh, cooking this stuff. Um, seasoned packets. Um, here's two here that I use quite a bit. Um, white chicken chili and fried rice. Now, I make my own white chicken chili seasoning, but... Um, when I don't have time to do that and whip it up from scratch, I will use the McCormick's, which is probably the closest to my uh, homemade seasoning that I make. And uh, white chicken chili is basically a can of this with the liquid. And then you add a can of beans into it. And whatever beans, most recipes will call for a specific bean like Canelli beans or Pinto beans or black beans. But in my general uh, cooking experience, any bean is going to work pretty much for any um, recipe. And then you add the seasonings into it. You can add some of the uh, some dried peppers or dried onions into that. Maybe a fresh piece of garlic that you got and you got yourself a really good meal that goes good with, you know, your tortillas or a quesadilla or if these are deep fried so you got some chips that are added into it. Another thing is Asian cooking. Um, one of the secrets to good Asian cooking is this right here, and this is something that also keeps really, really well, and this is sesame oil. A little bit of sesame oil to saute your rice in if you're making fried rice or to saute whatever your meat is. Again, your canned chicken or your canned pork, if it's drained, throw it in with a little bit of the sesame oil. That's basically the start of a good stir fry. But these are another seasoning that keeps really, really well. And you don't have to, you know, rotate these as much. If you get a deal on these, you can buy 10 or 12 packets of this, put this stuff up. And uh, it's a good se all purpose seasoning to have around. Another thing is our red sauce. Now red sauce is basically the sauce they put on enchiladas, a lot of Tex-Mex stuff. And what it is, is you get these big bags of uh, these dried chilies. Now these dried bags of dried chilies are typically um, inexpensive. Now this year they've had some uh, problems in uh, New Mexico growing these so these might not be as uh, inexpensive as they used to be but these used to be really really cheap and these last a long time. Cut the tops off, cut the uh, um, tops off, knock the seeds out of them, throw them in uh, some boiling water with a couple of these guys right here, bullion cubes, and uh, you let them soften up. You puree them with either a stick blender or a regular uh, food processor, and that's your red sauce to make your enchiladas. Well, then you can use your canned chicken, and then you can use your um, your uh, shelf-stable uh, corn tortillas to make yourself enchiladas, and your cheese out of the uh, cheese out of the freezer. And then that's a meal basically straight out of your pantry. And, you know, beans, beans are one of those things are easy to, uh, one of the easiest things really to uh, pressure can. But if you don't have a pressure canner, you know, black beans, 
Um, great northern beans, pinto beans are still relatively inexpensive um, in the can section of your store. Um, another thing that I use a lot of for uh, different recipes is these bacon pieces. These bacon pieces are actually shelf stable. You get them kind of like with a salad dressing and stuff and these have a bunch of different uses whether you're making like scallop potatoes or gratin potatoes, potato soup, any recipe that would call for a couple of pieces of bacon cut up to add for flavor you can add um, this in and use this. Bacon is also something that you can can yourself. Now that's sort of a rebel canning technique. The, uh, the USDA would not approve of me telling you that you can can bacon, but you can can bacon. You spread it out on uh, parchment paper, you roll it up, you put it in the can and you pressure can it just like you do any other um, meat. And that gets to another canned item that we use a ton of here and that's canned potatoes. Canned potatoes, um, are great for fried potatoes and they're also great for fortifying or basically making better something that's canned and I've done videos on that too especially with um, baked beans the old timers would take canned baked beans they would add bacon into a bunch of seasonings and make that more of a hearty meal again that's something you could use your home canned bacon for or your uh, your bacon pieces but uh, potato soup get canned potato soup of whatever brand that you can get large cans small cans depending on the size of your family but you get a couple cans of these and uh, a little dry milk if you don't have you know don't have any milk dried milk is something all the old timers always kept in uh, the houses the old farmhouses um, dried milk especially was bought in like five pound boxes and they would use that dried milk when uh, when they didn't have milk especially later when all the dairy farms started uh, going out but you can take um, your potato soup like that you can add in your canned potatoes and you can add in either your home canned bacon or your bacon pieces that you got at the store and you can fortify that have a little of your frozen cheese on the top for a garnish and you got yourself a really really hearty um, potato soup which is basically almost like a stew another thing is parmesan cheese you can do a lot of stuff with parmesan cheese um, that uh, you can really increase the flavor of stuff. And those cans of Parmesan cheese like that there, you can get um, quite a bit of shelf life out of those. And anything Italian, we like doing like uh, like an alfresco, you know, tomato. Got tomatoes from the garden, just like these guys right here. You know, you can uh, make like an alfresco pasta sauce. Uh, just cook those down, run them through a sieve to get the seeds and the skins out and... Uh, Cook your pasta separate, add the cooked pasta into that al fresco sauce with, with a half, uh, three quarters of a cup of Parmesan cheese, and you got yourself a really hearty one pot, basically, um, spaghetti. Uh, pancake mix. I've done videos on different quick breads where you can make with pancake mix. Pancakes are good. We do pancakes for supper at least every couple of weeks with either our fresh jam or Nutella or homemade maple syrup, or whatever, and uh, we'll, do, we'll do pancakes. But pancake mix can also be used to make quick breads, and I've done videos on that too. I'll make sure I put that video in uh, the description as well. Another thing when it comes to rice, cooking anything with rice like we got here in long-term storage, rice is... Um, better if it's sauteed a little bit first before you cook it. So you take your dry rice, you put it in with either regular uh, cooking oil, like a little olive oil, or if you're making something Asian, a little bit of the sesame oil. You saute that rice first, you brown it, then you add your broth into it or your water to, uh, to cook that. And that makes a really more flavorful rice. And pretty much any kind of rice, whether it's Mexican rice, Asian, or if it's something that I'm cooking like with chicken or whatnot, I will saute the, uh, the rice first. And another little uh, tip is canned chili. Canned chili um, is something that will keep around. I usually make chili from scratch, but sometimes you don't have enough time or one another member of the family is getting um, chili ready for something. Now this chili with no beans here is good if you're having it with tortillas or something. So it's kind of like a chilito, which would be like a burrito with uh, chili in it. But uh, chili, I always buy chili with no beans in it. And uh, 
it makes it more versatile but then if you want a regular chili you can add whatever canned bean that you have at home into that so you can add your own home canned pintos your home canned kidney beans your home canned um cannelli beans black beans you can add that into this canned chili now you just basically doubled uh, the amount of food that you have that you can serve and you kept the cost down because you know what beans the meat and stuff that's in here costs a lot more than what the beans do so i don't want to spend the same amount of money for something that's half beans in the can when i can just add beans into it um at home and uh like i said that just goes through some of the stuff that i got here you know i got uh dried celery here dried celery dried uh, peppers and dried onions are basically your trinity which you can use for anything cajun so all you would do you would reconstitute that and then put that back into whatever your recipe is so just some ideas here on how i cook and how i use my uh, prepper pantry to basically feed my family day in and day out and keep the cost as uh, low as possible but anyway this is modern refugee appreciate all my subscribers out there hope you guys i got a little information a little entertainment some ideas ideas out of this video here. I know this is a little bit longer than what I normally put out, but I figure that this information could really help somebody. But anyway, you guys have a good one.